I remember the abrupt jolt from darkness to consciousness, like being thrust into a chilling reality from the depths of a void. My eyes flickered open, revealing an unfamiliar canopy of twisted trees clawing at a gray, overcast sky. The damp, musty scent of decaying leaves filled my lungs, and the ground beneath me was cold and unforgiving. I sat up, my head spinning, my mind grappling with a singular terrifying fact. I had no memory of who I was or how I ended up in this desolate forest. The awakening unfolds with me, trying to piece together the fragments of my existence. The forest around me was dense. The forest around me was dense, suffocating with thick underbrush that seemed to swallow up any paths or landmarks. In my pockets, I found a few items, a crumpled map with indecipherable scribbles, a flickering flashlight, and a strange, ancient-looking amulet. The map offered no clarity. The flashlight's dim light seemed almost mocking in the vastness of the forest and the amulet. It felt unnervingly warm against my skin. Every step I took was cautious, the crunch of leaves underfoot sounding thunderous in the eerie silence. The forest seemed to watch me, its ancient trees whispering secrets I couldn't understand. I felt exposed, vulnerable, but the instinct to survive propelled me forward. As the day waned, the forest's unsettling tranquility began to fracture. Distant sounds, the snapping of twigs, rustling foliage, hinted at something or someone lurking just out of sight. Each noise sent a jolt of fear through me, every shadow a potential harbinger of danger. I wasn't alone. Nightfall brought a chilling fog that slithered through the trees. My flashlight's beam became a solitary beacon in the oppressive darkness. That's when I first heard it, a low guttural growl that seemed to come from everywhere and nowhere at once. I froze, the sound clawing at the edges of my sanity. The growl grew into a chorus of whispers, voices that were neither human nor animal. They seemed to be calling me, beckoning me deeper into the forest. I resisted, the primal part of my brain screaming at me to run, but my legs wouldn't obey. That's when I saw them, figures, barely discernible in the mist, encircling me. They moved with an unnatural grace, their silhouettes shifting and warping as if made of smoke. Panic took over. I ran, the flashlight's beam dancing wildly as I stumbled through the undergrowth. The whispers turned to shrieks, the growls to roars. Branches tore at my clothes, roots tripped me, but fear fueled my escape. I don't know how long I ran, but eventually I collapsed, gasping for air. The forest had fallen silent again, the figures gone. For now, I knew they were still there, somewhere in the darkness, waiting. I couldn't shake the feeling that this was a game, and I was the prey. In the cold embrace of the forest, with unknown horrors lurking in the shadows, I realized my struggle was only just beginning. There was no escape no sanctuary. I was lost, not just in this forest, but in the fragments of my own mind. As dawn broke, painting the sky with hues of crimson and gold, I understood that the light brought no safety. The hunt was far from over. It had just begun. With each step, I felt the eyes of the forest upon me, watching, waiting. The truth of my existence, the reason for my being here, remained shrouded in mystery. But one thing was clear. Survival was a fleeting hope in a forest that whispered with the voices of the damned. And I, nameless and forgotten, was part of its sinister tale. The first rays of the morning sun pierced through the dense foliage, casting a dim, eerie light across the forest. I stood up, my muscles aching from the night's ordeal. The terror of the night still clung to me, but the daylight offered a fragile sense of security. I clutched the amulet tightly, its warmth a small comfort against the chilling unknown. As I trudged through the underbrush, I tried to make sense of the map. The scribbles, once indecipherable, now seemed to form paths leading to a spot marked with an X. Was this a place of safety or another trap set by the forest and its unseen inhabitants? There was only one way to find out. 
The forest seemed less threatening in the daylight, but the feeling of being watched never left me. Birds chirped overhead, a natural soundtrack that was both calming and unsettling. I couldn't shake the feeling that they weren't just singing, but communicating, warning each other, or perhaps warning me. After hours of walking, the forest began to change. The trees grew taller, their branches intertwining above, creating a natural tunnel. The light dimmed and the air grew colder. I wrapped my arms around myself, shivering not just from the cold, but from a sense of foreboding. That's when I heard it. A distant echo, a faint whisper carried by the wind. It was a voice, or perhaps many voices, intertwined and indistinct. The words were unintelligible, but their tone was unmistakable. They were beckoning me. I followed the sound, my heart pounding in my chest. The forest grew darker, the trees now so dense that they blotted out the sun. The whispering grew louder, more insistent. I felt drawn to it, compelled by a force I couldn't understand. Suddenly, I stumbled upon a clearing. The ground was covered in a blanket of mist, swirling around my feet. In the center of the clearing stood an ancient tree. Its bark gnarled and twisted, its branches reaching out like gnarled fingers. Hanging from the tree was an object, wrapped in cloth, swaying gently in the breeze. I approached it cautiously, my curiosity battling with my fear. I reached out, my fingers trembling as I touched the cloth. It felt old, brittle. With a deep breath, I unwrapped it, revealing a book. Its cover was leather, worn and cracked. The pages yellowed with age. I opened it, the pages creaking with resistance. The writing inside was in a language I didn't recognize, the letters strange and archaic. But as I stared at them, they seemed to shift, forming words I could understand. It was a journal, written by someone, or something, that had lived in this forest long ago. The entries spoke of the forest's secrets, of hidden paths and ancient rituals. It mentioned the amulet I found, calling it a key to understanding the forest's true nature. The more I read, the more I felt a connection to the writer, as if their experiences mirrored my own. I heard a rustle behind me and quickly closed the book, hiding it in my jacket. Turning around, I saw nothing but the dense trees and the swirling mist. Yet, I knew I wasn't alone. The forest had eyes, and they were fixed on me. I left the clearing, the book safely tucked away, a new sense of purpose guiding me. I needed to understand the amulet, to decipher the forest's mysteries. But the voices in the mist followed me, whispering of things hidden in the shadows, things that watched and waited. As night approached, I found a hollow tree to shelter in. The forest was alive with sounds, the hooting of owls, the rustle of leaves, the whispers of the unseen. I clutched the book and the amulet, their presence a small comfort in the encroaching darkness. In the heart of the forest, under the watchful eyes of its hidden denizens, I realized that my journey was just beginning. The answers I sought were buried deep within these woods, and I was determined to uncover them. But as the night fell and the whispers grew louder, I couldn't shake the feeling that the forest was not just a place of mysteries, but of dangers yet to be revealed. The night in the hollow tree was long and restless. Every sound in the forest seemed amplified, and the whispers in the mist felt closer than ever. I clutched the ancient book and the amulet, their presence a constant reminder of the enigmatic journey I was on. As dawn broke, I emerged from my hiding place, determined to unravel the secrets of the forest and the mysterious amulet. The morning was cool and misty, the sun struggling to pierce through the dense canopy. I continued following the map, its paths now slightly more familiar. The forest seemed to be leading me somewhere. The forest seemed to be leading me somewhere, its twisted trees and shadowy underbrush, part of a larger unseen plan. As I walked, I couldn't shake the feeling of being followed. Glancing over my shoulder, I caught fleeting glimpses of figures in the mist, shadows that seemed to flit between the trees. Were they the same beings from the night before? Or was my mind playing tricks on me, 
the isolation and fear taking their toll. The forest opened up to reveal a small, secluded pond. Its waters were still mirroring the gray sky above. I approached cautiously, the amulet growing warmer against my chest. As I neared the water's edge, I saw something submerged beneath the surface. A statue, ancient and moss, covered its features eroded by time. I leaned closer, and the water rippled as if responding to my presence. Images flashed in the pond. Scenes of the forest in a time long past, of people gathered around this very spot, their faces obscured by hoods and shadows. The amulet pulsed, and the images grew clearer. Startled by the vision, I stumbled back. The pond returned to its still state, the images gone as quickly as they had appeared. I took a deep breath, trying to process what I'd seen. The amulet was more than just a trinket. It was a key to the forest's past, perhaps even to my own lost memories. I continued on, the map leading me ever deeper into the forest. The trees grew denser, their branches intertwining to create a dark, tangled web above. The whispers followed me, a constant murmur just beyond understanding. The day wore on, and the forest grew darker, more oppressive. I found myself in a part of the woods that felt older, untouched by time. The trees here were massive, their trunks covered in strange markings that glowed faintly in the dim light. The air was heavy, charged with an energy that made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. That's when I heard it, a low, mournful howl that echoed through the trees. It was answered by another, and then another, until the forest was filled with the sound. I froze, a chill running down my spine. The howls were getting closer, the shadows in the trees moving, converging on my location. I ran, the howls and whispers chasing me. The forest seemed to come alive, the trees shifting, the ground undulating beneath my feet. I was no longer just a lost soul in a strange forest. I was prey, hunted by the very essence of the woods. As I fled, I stumbled into a clearing, the moonlight breaking through the canopy to illuminate an ancient stone altar in the center. The howls ceased abruptly, the forest falling into an eerie silence. I approached the altar, my heart pounding in my chest. Carved into the stone were symbols that matched those on the amulet. I touched them, and a surge of energy coursed through me. The forest around me blurred, and I was transported to another time, another place. I saw the altar surrounded by hooded figures. The amulet raised high as they chanted in a language I couldn't understand. The vision ended as suddenly as it had begun, leaving me breathless and disoriented. The forest was silent, watching me with unseen eyes. I realized then that the answers I sought were not just about the forest, but about myself. Who was I? Why was I here? And what connection did I have to this ancient haunted place? As I stood there, alone in the moonlit clearing, I knew one thing for certain. The forest was calling to me, its secrets woven into the very fabric of my being, and I would follow its call wherever it might lead. After the startling revelations at the stone altar, the forest seemed to take on a new character. It was as if the trees and the very air itself were charged with an unseen energy. I felt a tug in my chest, a pull guiding me forward. The amulet, once just a mysterious artifact, now felt like a part of me, its presence intertwined with the pulsing life of the forest. I continued deeper into the woods, guided by the subtle whispers of the trees and the soft glow of the amulet. The map in my pocket seemed redundant now. The forest itself was leading me on this cryptic journey. The canopy above thickened, casting long shadows that danced in the faint light. It felt like being watched by countless unseen eyes. As the day waned, a sense of urgency gripped me. The howls from the night before lingered in my mind, a haunting reminder of dangers lurking within this ancient place. The whispers grew louder, a symphony of voices that seemed both foreign and familiar. They spoke of hidden truths and forgotten paths, urging me to hurry. 
I quickened my pace, the ground beneath me becoming rougher, more untamed. The trees here were ancient, their gnarled roots sprawling like serpents across the forest floor. In the dimming light, they appeared to move, coiling and twisting in a silent dance. Suddenly, a sharp howl pierced the air, closer than before. My heart raced. The hunters of the night were on my trail again. I broke into a run, the forest blurring around me as I dashed through thick underbrush and leapt over fallen logs. The howls echoed around me, a chorus of predators closing in. The forest seemed to sense my panic, the trees bending and swaying as if to clear a path. The amulet pulsed faster, its glow a beacon in the deepening gloom. I felt a connection to the forest. I felt a connection to the forest, a symbiotic bond that gave me strength and speed. As I ran, the scenery changed rapidly. The trees grew taller, their branches forming a natural archway overhead. The air was cooler here, the atmosphere heavy with a sense of ancient power. I realized I had entered the heart of the forest, a place few had ever seen. The howls were now right on my heels, the sound of snapping twigs and rustling leaves signaling my pursuer's proximity. In a desperate bid for safety, I darted into a narrow crevice between two massive trees. Squeezing through, I found myself in a small clearing, enclosed by towering trunks and thick foliage. I gasped for breath, my back against a tree. The howls circled the clearing, but they did not enter. It was as if an invisible barrier held them at bay. I looked around, searching for an escape route, but found something else instead. Carvings on the trees, ancient symbols that matched those on the amulet. As I traced the carvings with my fingers, a calmness washed over me. The forest was protecting me, its ancient magic a shield against the creatures outside. The realization filled me with awe and a deep sense of gratitude. I was not just a stranger here, I was part of something much greater, a story that had been unfolding long before I arrived. The night passed in an eerie calm. The howls eventually faded, leaving only the whispers of the forest. I sat there, beneath the watchful gaze of the ancient trees, pondering my connection to this place. The amulet, the book, the visions. They were all pieces of a puzzle that was slowly coming together. As dawn broke, the clearing was bathed in a soft golden light. The air was fresh and invigorating, filled with the promise of new discoveries. I knew my journey was far from over. The forest had more secrets to reveal, and I was the key to unlocking them. With a renewed sense of purpose, I stepped out of the clearing, ready to face whatever the forest had in store for me. The chase had ended, but my quest for answers was just beginning. As I ventured further into the heart of the forest, guided by the mysterious pull of the amulet, the landscape around me began to change. The trees, once dense and overbearing, now opened up to reveal a hidden world long forgotten. I stumbled upon ruins, ancient and crumbling, their stones covered in moss and ivy. These were the remnants of a civilization that had once thrived within the embrace of the forest. Walking among the ruins, I felt a deep sense of history. The air was thick with the echoes of the past, whispering tales of the people who had lived here. The amulet grew warmer, vibrating gently against my chest, as if resonating with the energy of the place. I explored the ruins, my fingers tracing the cold, weathered stone. The structures were a mix of crumbling walls, archways, and fallen pillars arranged in a layout that suggested a once thriving community. In the center of the ruins stood a statue, its features eroded by time, but its presence still commanding. The statue depicted a figure cloaked and hooded, with the same amulet I wore hanging around its neck. As I gazed at the statue, a flash of understanding struck me. This was not just any ordinary place. It was a sanctuary, a sacred site where the amulet and its bearer held great significance. The connection I felt to the forest, the visions, and the whispers. It all led back to here. I noticed a pedestal in front of the statue, 
with an inscription barely legible on its surface. I brushed away the moss and dirt, revealing the words carved into the stone. The inscription spoke of a guardian, chosen by the forest, who would one day return to restore balance and harmony. I felt a chill run down my spine as I read the words. Was this referring to me? Was I the guardian the inscription spoke of? The realization was overwhelming, but before I could fully process it, the tranquility of the ruins was shattered. The howls returned, distant at first, but growing louder and more urgent. I realized that the safety of the ruins was only temporary. The creatures of the forest were still after me, and it was only a matter of time before they found their way here. I quickly looked around for an escape route or a place to hide. That's when I noticed a path, partially hidden by overgrown vines, leading away from the ruins. I had no choice but to take it, the howls growing closer with each passing second. As I hurried down the path, the ruins disappeared behind me. Swallowed up by the forest, the path wound deeper into the woods, taking me into uncharted territory. The howls seemed to be right on my heels, driving me forward with a mix of fear and determination. The path led me to a steep incline, covered in thick undergrowth. I climbed, my hands grasping at roots and rocks, the sounds of pursuit ever, present behind me. As I reached the top, I found myself on the edge of a cliff, the forest stretching out below me like a vast living ocean. I had a moment of respite, catching my breath and gathering my thoughts. The view from the cliff was breathtaking, the forest a tapestry of greens and browns, alive with hidden mysteries. But there was no time to admire the view. I had to keep moving to find answers and to understand my role in this ancient story. With the howls echoing up the cliffside, I continued along the narrow path that skirted the edge. The journey was treacherous, but I pressed on, driven by a need to uncover the truth about the amulet, the ruins, and my own forgotten past. The narrow path along the cliff was treacherous, with loose stones and overgrown roots that seemed to grasp at my feet. The howls had faded into the distance, but the sense of being pursued lingered. Every rustle of leaves, every snap of a twig, sent a jolt of fear through me. I knew the creatures of the forest were still out there, watching, waiting. As I journeyed on, the forest began to change again. The trees here were older, their trunks thick and twisted, their branches heavy with the weight of time. Moss and lichen clung to the bark, and a thick mist hung in the air, dampening sound and blurring vision. It felt like walking into a different world, a place untouched by the passage of time. The path led me deeper into this ancient part of the forest, where the light struggled to penetrate the dense canopy. Here, the whispers of the forest were clearer, more insistent. They spoke in a language I didn't understand, yet somehow, it felt familiar. The amulet pulsed in rhythm with the whispers, its glow a steady beacon in the gloom. I came across a clearing where the mist parted to reveal a pond, its surface still and mirror, like in the reflection, I saw not just my own face, but fleeting images of others. Faces I didn't recognize, but felt connected to. It was as if the pond held memories, echoes of those who had walked this path before me. As I watched the images, I realized that the amulet was more than a guide. It was a link to the past, to the guardians who had once protected the forest. The realization filled me with a sense of purpose. I was part of a legacy, a chain of guardians stretching back through time. I left the clearing, continuing my journey with a newfound resolve. The whispers guided me, leading me through the dense foliage, over trickling streams and under arching branches. I felt the presence of the forest around me, a watchful guardian in its own right. Eventually, the path brought me to a grove where the trees formed a circle around a stone pedestal. Carved into the pedestal was a series of symbols that matched those on the amulet. I approached cautiously, aware of the significance of this place. As I stood before the pedestal, the amulet reacted, glowing brighter and warmer. 
I reached out, placing the amulet onto the pedestal. The symbols on the stone lit up, a warm light emanating from them, enveloping me in a soft glow. The air around me hummed with energy, and the whispers crescendoed into a harmonious chant. The forest seemed to come alive, its energy flowing through me. Visions flashed before my eyes, past guardians, the rise and fall of civilizations, the forest enduring through the ages. When the light faded, I found myself still standing in the grove, but with a deeper understanding of my role. I was the latest guardian, tasked with protecting the forest and maintaining the balance between it and the outside world. I picked up the amulet, now pulsing gently, a constant reminder of my duty. I knew the journey ahead would be challenging, but I was no longer alone. The forest was with me, guiding me, its unseen eyes watching over me. As I left the grove, the path before me seemed clearer. I was ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, to uncover the deeper mysteries of the forest and my connection to it. The legacy of the Guardians was now mine to uphold. With the newfound knowledge of my role as the Guardian, I walked with a purpose through the forest. The path ahead seemed clearer, almost inviting, as if the trees themselves were guiding me. The whispers of the forest, once cryptic, now felt like a conversation I was a part of. The amulet around my neck was a constant source of warmth and reassurance, pulsing in harmony with the life around me. However, the sense of duty that filled me was soon met with a growing unease. The forest, alive with its ancient magic, also harbored a deepening darkness. The further I journeyed, the more I felt it. A creeping shadow, a coldness that the warm glow of the amulet couldn't dispel. The trees began to thin out, giving way to a large clearing. In the center stood an imposing tree, larger and older than any I'd seen before. Its bark was almost black, and its twisted branches reached out like gnarled hands. This was the heart of the forest and the source of the gathering darkness. As I approached the tree, the temperature dropped, and a chill wind whipped around me. The whispers of the forest turned to hushed tones, as if in fear. I felt the amulet grow heavier, its glow dimming in the presence of the tree. It was then that I understood. This ancient tree was not just a part of the forest. It was a guardian too, but one that had succumbed to the darkness. It stood as a warning, a reminder of what could happen if the balance was not maintained. I reached out to touch the tree, and visions flashed before my eyes. I saw the tree in its younger days, vibrant and full of life. But over time, it had been corrupted, its energy turning dark and twisted. The forest had suffered with it, the balance thrown into disarray. The vision ended, and I was back in the clearing. Night had begun to fall, casting long shadows across the ground. I knew what I had to do. I needed to restore the balance to bring light back to this part of the forest and heal the ancient tree. I took the amulet off and held it out in front of me. Concentrating on the energy of the forest around me, I channeled it through the amulet. Light began to emulate. Light began to emanate from it, casting a warm glow over the clearing. The tree reacted, its branches trembling. The darkness that had taken hold of it began to recede, the black bark lightening to a healthier hue. The wind died down and the temperature began to rise, the chilling cold replaced by a comforting warmth. As the balance was restored, the forest around me transformed. The trees seemed to stand taller, their leaves a brighter green. The whispers of the forest returned to their gentle, melodic tones, a song of gratitude and harmony. I put the amulet back on, feeling its light weight against my chest. The tree now healed stood as a beacon of hope and resilience. I had fulfilled my duty as the guardian, but I knew this was just the beginning. The forest was vast, and there would be other challenges to face, other darknesses to overcome. With a renewed sense of purpose, I continued on my journey, the forest guiding me. I was its guardian, its protector, and I would do everything in my power to keep it safe. The path ahead was uncertain, but I was ready for whatever lay in store.
As dawn broke on a new day in the forest, the air was filled with a sense of peace I hadn't felt since my journey began. The trees whispered softly, a gentle murmur of life that flowed through the forest. With the darkness that had gripped the heart of the woods now lifted, I could feel a shift in the balance, a harmony restored. But even in this moment of tranquility, I knew my journey was not yet complete. The forest had one more secret to reveal, a final piece of the puzzle that was my own forgotten past. Guided by the amulet, I made my way through the awakening forest to a place I had not yet explored. I arrived at a secluded glen where the sun's rays filtered through the leaves in a cascade of light. In the center of the glen stood a stone monolith, ancient and covered in moss, but still standing strong. Carvings adorned its surface, similar to the symbols on the amulet and the pedestal in the grove. As I approached the monolith, the amulet began to pulse rapidly, its light growing brighter. I touched the stone and a surge of energy coursed through me. Visions filled my mind, not of the forest or its past guardians, but of myself. I saw myself as a child playing in the forest, a place I'd once called home. I watched as I grew older, learning the ways of the forest and its secrets. I was being groomed to be its guardian, a role passed down through generations. But then came a day of fire and smoke, outsiders encroaching upon the forest, seeking to claim it for their own. In the chaos, I was lost, my memories taken by the forest to protect me, to keep its secrets safe. The vision ended, and I was back in the glen, tears streaming down my face. I finally understood. I was the guardian, not by chance, but by birthright. The forest had been my home. Its whispers, my lullabies. Its creatures, my companions. With this revelation, I felt a newfound strength, a resolve to protect the forest, not just as its guardian, but as its child. But as its child. But I also knew that the threat to the forest was not over. The outsiders who had once sought to destroy it could return, and I had to be ready. I spent days preparing, honing my skills, learning from the forest. The creatures of the woods, once my pursuers, now became my allies, guided by the amulet's light. Together, we stood watch, guardians of a world hidden from the eyes of those who would harm it. Then one night, they came, a group of outsiders, armed and determined to conquer the forest. But they were not prepared for what awaited them. The forest itself rose to defend its heart, branches entwining to create barriers, roots rising from the ground to trip them up. The creatures of the woods joined the fray, a fierce display of nature's will. I stood in the midst of the chaos, the amulet glowing fiercely. I was no longer just a lone guardian. I was the forest's voice, its fury, its protector. We pushed the invaders back, driving them out of the forest. As they fled, I knew they would not return. The forest had made it stand and it would not be forgotten. As dawn broke, the forest settled into a peaceful calm. The battle was over, but the forest would always need a guardian. I knew my place was here, among the trees, the creatures, and the whispering leaves. I walked back to the heart of the forest, to the ancient tree that had once succumbed to darkness. It stood tall and proud a symbol of the forest's resilience. I touched its bark, feeling the pulse of life beneath my fingers. In the forest, I had found my past, my purpose, and my home. As its guardian, I would protect it, cherish it, and live among its shadows. The forest had given me a second chance, and I would spend my life ensuring it thrived, a hidden sanctuary for all its wonders. The story of the forest and its guardian would continue. A tale of magic, mystery, and the unbreakable bond between a soul and its home. Thanks for listening. If you like the story, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to your comments. See you in the next video.